The world of esports may be a mystery or something very common to you. On this, the Jew Padre podcast in association with Rated R Esports, we're going to talk a lot about it. So without further ado, let's jump right into our episode. Again, happy Friday. This is Juhadre. I'm Alvatross17. And we have a really special guest for you this week, our good old friend, Cobalt Wraith. Hi, everyone. Hello, and welcome. Thank you. You're very welcome. Okay, so to start out, this week, I have been looking forward to this so much. I wanted to say the same thing. These two are really good friends of mine, and I'm going to get my, my voice in now before I end up not talking with the conversation <laughs> they're going to have. Okay, so today's topic was a very, very interesting one because there's so many points you can go off of. Opinions, stats. In the end, they do the same thing. Today, specs. PC, equipment. Hardware. Hardware. Oh. Okay, yeah. Now, see, that's why why I, I remember telling you when I started the podcast with Albatross that I wanted you for a very specific episode. Okay. And the reason for that is because you and I have had this exact conversation Every couple so weekends times. for the last four or five years. And I get pulled in between of it because you're because over you here. know I'm right. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> All right. So here's, okay. here's what we're going to do. Uh, Cobalt, you've listened to the other episodes of Jupadre. You know the, the kind of direction we're going here. What... What does this have to do with esports is mostly what we're going to be talking about. What do you need versus what do most people have versus what should you get versus what's out there that is completely unnecessary. Well, let's, right? let's start Let's start this way. The reason why we're doing it about hardware is there's a lot more PC esports than there are consoles. That, all right. You know what? There, let's get that out of the way. A really, I hate to say it. You know, there's nothing wrong with buying a console. Yes, there is. Oh. But, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's all preference on that. But... Let, let's be real. You, PCs have a bigger brain. They There's more options when it comes to equipment on the side. So not just hardware. Mm-hmm. And hardware as well. So it's a bigger, broader way. You, you buy an Xbox, you get an Xbox. You buy a PC, it's a, what kind of PC? Mm-hmm. Not about a PS4. What kind? It's black. Oh, well, that's <laughs> just racist. Or, or white. Or white. Can but you get a? Can you, you get a? You white actually can get a white. You can get a white one. You you could probably get one bill of wood if you really felt like. Oh it. my god. Okay, you can, but that costs a lot of money. Rather than and then by that time, you might as well just bought a PC. Nah, see, this could be an interesting conversation because we're we're at a point right now where hardware needs are evolving so much. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm very excited myself to see where this goes. Right, especially with my my personal opinion here. You know what? We'll get in in a second. So. To, to build a computer for esports, the, the main components you're going to need are first your processor, your motherboard, your RAM, which is also called memory for those who, you know, when we start talking about it might get confused, your video card. Which can also be called a graphics card. Graphics video, yes, you they are, are correct. The, they yeah. are technically the same thing. And your hard drive. Thank you for mentioning that state. one. Yeah, no, and that's actually really, really important. But so, where where do you start when you go to build a computer? I know the answer. I'm pretty sure Alvatross knows the answer. Where I build do you them, start? So I do. Uh, this is one of the areas we, we differ a lot because I feel like I start with pre-builds most of the time. All right. You know what? Okay. Okay. That's that's fair. That's fair. Let me, well, let, let's back up a little bit. When I was getting going from console to PC, I remember I remember both of you. You've got Juhadre. Tug at me on site, just, just, just build it. Just, let's just build you one. And I've got Cobalt Wraith going, dude, let's get you a pre-built. Mm-hmm. Let's just get you a pre-built. Make a couple of tweaks here and there. Which, get it up to speed. Which is what I actually end up doing. Yep. And then I built myself a server, and now I got both best, both worlds pre-built. We're, we're on the record. He listens to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, but now, this is this No, because I went and built one right after that. It's true. You so, did a little both. It did. The question I think still applies. Yeah. When you're looking at your machine, what is the first piece you look to see if it's good enough? The biggest thing, and this isn't a necessarily like I'm, I'm have some big continuum of choices here. 
Uh, I'm glad you mentioned hard drive because I feel like the change from just standard st spinning disks to solid states mm -hmm. is the biggest advance in personal computing in the last decade. Well, even beyond that, you you went from solid state to an M.2 drive now. Yeah, exactly. Which is what I'm running. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, uh, like, first there's this, you know, on or off, does it have a solid state? Right. I might look at it otherwise, but that's going to be the first thing I buy. I like it. And so now when we're talking, let's say that we're, we're going custom build here. Okay. What hard drive do you want? It, it, I highly recommend an M.2. Agreed. Because well, that's the, that's, that's the top of the line right It now. is. It's the top of the line. It's the fastest. will give you the best performance. And yep. they're the smallest. They are they're, also. They yes, are. Yeah. I think the, the M stands for micro. I don't I, believe I, I've I, looked that up. I've never looked. I was You're just good. I was trying to sound smart. I don't know. I don't know. All I know is it's dimmed out too. But right. So I I have my own brand preference. Okay. Which it, it's what it's Western Digital. Okay. I won't buy storage or hard drives that aren't Western Digital anymore. I just I won't do I'll it. I'll go with you on that. Working at a data center, I'm not going to say who, but there's a specific brand I won't buy anymore. Yeah. yeah there, it is super specific. I won't buy it. Okay. But we can't name that because it's a negative thing. And it also divulges things that are NDA uh, says no. Good call. Yeah, good call. But so, so passing on that then, like, I don't really care that much. Mm -hmm. I, I found that for, for games, um, as long as the OS is running off a of solid state, I don't have a lot of preferences beyond that. So I'm, I'm going through a, a CS program right now. Can we kind of back up? all of the calls to the operating system for how it functions, as long as those are on the solid state and you have enough RAM for whatever it is that, that you're running, you could have a 64 gig, almost no name solid state, and you're still gonna get a good gaming performance. Personally, I've really enjoyed Samsung's if you're just going for top of the line speeds and you're doing mm -hmm. it for more than just gaming and you right. want generally good performance for everything you put on it. Uh, I actually swapped out, uh, I'm running a Razer Blade laptop right now as my oh, main machine. That's right. Uh, I swapped out the, the top of the line Samsung card in it. I wanted some more capacity while I'm going to school. And I actually threw an Intel brand card in there just to see how the Intel SSDs go. And it's worked fantastic. So quadrupled the amount of storage I had, haven't had any problems. And good. You know, good. You know, Seagate is another really popular brand. Uh, if for those of you looking out for it, Seagate is another. We're still good talking way about storage. Go. Yes, still yes. storage. Okay, uh, that's another good one to go. I won't because I've had a, a weird experience. Which with is a Seagate. so funny about that because I have had I've got a 500 gigabyte external Seagate mm -hmm. hard drive that our friend Moose. I'm just, yeah, I'm gonna use Moose because that's yeah good enough. That's that's his gamer name now. Good We're enough. We're just gonna call him that. Anyways, Moose, he <laughs> gave that to me before I got married. Before I knew that my wife existed. And it still runs great, smooth. Yeah, and there see, that's go. why I say, personally, I won't buy anything but. However, there are always those other cases. You have the worst luck with certain brands. Tell me about <laughs> it. It's really crazy. We'll get into that another time, and possibly later in this podcast. So, what comes next? <laughs> After you've looked at storage, making sure it's a solid state slash M.2. So, you're saying you always start with storage? Uh, that's that's the, the yes, no, right off Okay, the Okay, no, no, no. We're talking about that's what you start with when you're looking at a pre-built. Yes. Not starting out what I'm looking at when I'm going to build my own from the ground up. Oh, it, regardless, that's going to be the first thing I buy. Even if I'm going to be building a new computer, okay. we're, we're going to start okay. with that. Uh, if I'm doing a build from scratch, the next thing is going to be the motherboard. Uh, but even a pre-built, if it doesn't have a solid state, it has to really sell me and have an option to add it. Like the one that I bought, that you were like, you throw solid state in that, you're going to be perfectly oh, yeah. balanced. You, Which you got really a is. great deal, and the only thing it was missing was a solid state. So at that and point, it was proper like, cooling. Eh, all right, that's <laughs> <laughs> you, you do need that. <laughs> I. <laughs> All right, so those are, those are cheap. Throw in a couple of bucks really quick. Yeah, pitch yeah, in yeah. for the console people, even you current-gen console users. Mm -hmm. you, you can still throw an external solid state on it. Do it. Well, that is the main thing for gaming. Let's, let's back up just, just one, one, one way or other. For people on console, they're probably like, oh, they're just, they're just going to talk. For those of you that don't understand, because you, oh, I don't like playing with mouse and keyboard, <laughs> you can actually plug your controller right into it. Yeah. Right into the PC. It'll even do Bluetooth. There you go. Problem solved. Join the PC world. You, oh my gosh. You I'm sorry. I was a console guy growing up, so I, I've got to fight for it. I, PC. Anyways, moving, go ahead. moving on. The motherboard yep. is what you talked about. So what it's actually, I had this talk with someone recently at work 
about, you know, the differences of motherboard. And he asked me, he said, does it matter which motherboard? And I was like, oh, uh, yes. So why does it matter? Again, that's if I'm doing an actual build. Right. Um, just to kind of play on that for a second, because this we, we really approach this from different directions, where, mm-hmm. where you build these from the ground up. And most of the time, I'm, I'm, built, I'm, I'm just buying things that are already put together and, and doing some tinkering if I need to. Okay. Uh, so most of the time, I don't worry about motherboards. I don't have motherboard specs down as much as you do. All right, Unless that's fair. it's bad, it's what's ever <laughs> in the machine. Uh, okay. the, the exception to that is I, if I am looking to actually build something, it's does it satisfy the standards for whatever I need? Exactly. Is it name brand? Does it have enough PCIe slots? Are, are they matching the latest standards? What, what's my, my I.O. on this? Mm-hmm. That's what I, I'm going to look at. I.O. is input-output. That's your USB stuff on the back, your... Uh, What's that thing called? Ethernet port. Man, I yep. can't think words. Right. Wow. <laughs> Don't judge you me. Hadre, you, wow. Anyway, so to to further that, there are a couple things you need to look at on your motherboards. First of all, if you have an M.2, make sure it has an M.2 slot. Kind of important. Okay, number well, one. You want to make sure it's a proper M.2 M. slot because there's three different sizes. There are three different sizes. I have yet to find out if you can move the peg. You can. Uh, Mine didn't okay, move actually, Okay, I, I take that back. You can if it's the motherboard like that. The one that's in my server, you can do that so you can do I, uh, three different sizes. The right. one in this, in the my gaming, cannot move. You yeah. have to use a small one. And I'm pretty sure that on my motherboard mm-hmm. it doesn't move either because I tried with Vice Grips and everything and it just started like stripping the... Yeah, so when you can, so yeah, yeah. you can. No, so the, for those listening at home, do some research before you buy one of these. Always. Because it's not just that it has the slot. So there's 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 different lengths of the cards and they'll they'll actually give you those specifications. But the different types of connections off of these cards actually represent different data standards that the cards use as well, whether they're running off SATA protocols or PCIe protocols. Do your research and and, and match up all the cute little acronyms before yeah. you buy one. And hey, if you are building and want to know, at Juhadre, baby, I got you. I can talk with you and, and help you with that. But now if you want somebody that's going to be less biased, come to me. <laughs> <laughs> He's a brand guy. I'm, a brand I'm more guy. of a... Uh... I, I'm more reasonable, and Cobalt Wraith here, well, he, he just he just knows everything. <laughs> Next thing you want to check is your uh, your RAM speeds, your your memory. So on that motherboard, you want to make sure most motherboards come with with a number next to it and four slots. Yeah, we do you, two you want four, four slots. slots. You want four slots. Uh, make sure that it it they're gonna be. DDR4 as of this recording on October 25th, 2019. Next year? Next year is DDR5. probably going to be DDR5. We don't know. Well, but graphics cards are already running DDR5. G, DDR6 even. Yep. Oh, even better. Anyway, there are certain speeds there, and most manufacturers will have parentheses OC and then a few more speeds. That's overclock. So you can get those speeds. But if you install it, you need to change your BIOS to to run the slot on the motherboard at that speed. But that's not what we're talking about until we get to memory. We're still on motherboards. Yeah. And so from there, you need your socket. Every motherboard comes with a socket that aligns with a certain processor. Now, let's, you know, going off that, some of you are probably thinking, okay, what about Intel and AMD? That's where it comes in motherboards as well. There is a specific type of motherboard for those. Intel mm-hmm. has their own type of motherboards, and so does AMD. Correct. So that is something you got to look at when getting a motherboard. Is it compatible to Intel, or is it compatible to AMD? And then the type of the type of socket that that processor is. So Cobalt, can you spell Segway? Uh, which sort of segue are we looking for here? This, right here. We're talking processor, <laughs> I believe. I, I, I just bought an e-scooter recently. so Oh my right. gosh, that's We're, right. <laughs> did you really? I did. Oh. They, they, they've been popular long enough. They're actually decent, but not the subject of this podcast. No. So, no. Uh, would conversations you s- after. <laughs> in, in a direct, you know, ground up build, you would go processor next. But what would you do? Look, at, you've got your storage. What are what are you looking at next in your pre-built machine? Well, like we said, the the motherboard for me is a means to an end. So right. I am not one who's going to start with that. It's just going to match the next pieces. So at each step, I'm going to check. This is what I've selected. That'll narrow down maybe a list of motherboards that mm-hmm. I've, I've got available. So for now, processor probably next. That that may change. You and I have had a couple of Intel AMD discussions. 
That's uh, actually one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to bring it on here. <laughs> Again, I'm a fan, but I'm an AMD guy all the way. I have been ever since Vishera. Okay. Uh, the FX processors with the bulldozer architecture. Sure. And I will admit it. It's garbage. It's not good anymore at all. It, it wasn't back then. But I am a Ryzen guy right okay. now. I have uh, a Ryzen chip right now, and I think they're the best out there at the moment. Sure. However, you yourself are an Intel. There's some truth to the bu- to the the built for Intel uh, kind of thing, and mm-hmm. because so many developers are running off of you know Intel focused software, uh, that's I feel like that makes a difference. How much of a difference? <laughs> um, uh, again, it, it depends. The The biggest place that's made a difference has been in mobile chips. Um, another area we differ, I've, I've had a lot more laptops than desktops. All right, that's true. That that may change in the future. And that's that's been a big part of what informed my brand loyalty is in general, especially on laptops. Mm-hmm. I found that Intel ones, you're, you're just getting not necessarily more bang for your buck per se, because no. they're, they're usually more expensive. But in terms of what they're capable of, the different security features, your your general performance, performance under load, Intel have been better. Now, interestingly, mm-hmm. one of my favorite brands, Surface, is running a, we're air quotes, custom <laughs> AMD chip <laughs> in their, their newest Surface laptop. Yes, yes. Um, and as we've talked this year, uh, one of the biggest problems I ever had with AMD was just consistency. And if they can continue to bring their A game for a little bit longer and then start to move into the mobile space, I may not care as much about what processor I'm running in the future. I, I may be able to focus just on more on the specs of those and what mm-hmm. I want it to do and less on who made it. I like that. So now getting away from who made it, let's talk what does your processor need in terms of playing games? Because sure. that's that's the point of the podcast here is... Where, where does it come into eSports? So there are a couple of things that you want to keep in mind when picking your processor. And what, what would those things be? <sighs> At the moment, you, you still care about your, your single thread speed. So mm-hmm. very few games do you care about having like eight physical cores or anything fancy like that. If, you, if you're over two, you're probably good for gaming. Mm-hmm. But it depends on how you use it. Uh, because especially if you're streaming, the, the, more, th- the more threads you've got, the better off you're going to be. Um, so uh, Alvatross cores and threads okay so if we're going off cores and threads the core is the brain so if you got a quad core you've got four cores that's four brains meaning it can do four processes at the same time that's what it can do now a thread that just makes it so it can read and write at the same time making sure that what so what that means is if you've got a hyper threaded quad core that means each core has got two threads it can read and write at the same time so it can do Eight things at once. Yeah. So, but there's also a, uh, there, there's, there's a, a fact to that as well. So when you're getting that, when you're playing games, you're not just going to be playing a game. Remember, you're going to have friends. So you're also going to be running uh, an, chat an audio, program. a chat group, uh, your, your chat, your your audio, maybe even a stream, you know, mm-hmm. through Discord, Twitch. Um, if you're using NVIDIA, you've got the, the G, the G zone. Is that what it's called? I don't use it. It's, G-Sync. G, well, or no, it's it's. You're, you're talking about the GeForce experience. Yeah, the GeForce experience. You got okay. that that will also use it as well. So you got to remember, you got all these things. And if you're also using Google Chrome in the background or Firefox, Don't Inter- do that. Explorer, <laughs> <laughs> just well, if you're using Chrome, an internet browser, Chrome is the biggest RAM hog ever. It really is, which is funny because I'm probably the only one in this room that's like, screw it, I'm still gonna use it. No, <laughs> I'm I'm out. I do. Anyway, Anyways, but. Time. A lot of people still have that running in the background. So you got to think about, oh, I'm only running a game. What else are you running in the background? Because you might be listening to music. You got your chat. You've got your audio, which, yeah. you know, because you've got your mic. Because think about it. If you're using your mic, you've got sound coming in and you've got sound going out at the same time. You need a processor that can do it. So cores, and make sure you got enough. For And for standard gaming, enough really is not that many like no if if you're not running anything in the background even a good dual core processor is enough for most things there are some modern games that are taking better advantage of those multiple cores some streamers have specialized hardware for their recording and their audio that reduces the load on the processor 
So and some games now aren't they? You actually like League of Legends? It, it's not your processor that's actually processing. It's more the game that's streaming it to you. Isn't that correct? So uh, or they update in that? that way? No, but we'll we'll get to that. Yeah, okay. There, there's a couple of things that that really change that equation. Again, so. I don't play that game. I just I heard something about that. But anyways, continue. You're good. That's that's really all there is to that. You your requirements on the processor for the most part are not that heavy. If you really want to specialize, you do need to check the game. Games with a ton of logic, Risk of Rain, Minecraft, things like that. Skyrim. Skyrim's a pretty big one. Well, no, it's... That one actually more requires RAM. And I'm, I'm talking about the number of calculations. So okay. If, if okay. you look like things that are constantly updating things, mm -hmm. Minecraft's actually a great example because as you're moving around, there's all these calculations. It's keeping track of all these different actors. What are they doing? If you've played Risk of Rain 2, how many items do you end up with on your bar? Oh, dude, it... I think at once we got 37 and I, th no, we got more than that because on your game alone, sure. You had probably 26 of just one item. Oh so yeah. We're, we're talking easy, easy, like 50. Yeah. And this, this is just 50. stacks of one item that there, there are runs. Where that you it constantly up, has to remember that it's doing that. Sure. And you're, you've got 40 to 50 diff, like unique items. You've got stacks of those items. You've got all the different actors on the screen. That's what I'm talking about. That is a logic heavy game. It's checking for collisions for all these things on the screen. It's checking for interactions between the items and everything you and do. And the other characters playing. Exactly. Those logic-heavy games, those are more processor-heavy. For those, yeah, you want something a little bit more. But in general, as long as you're running, you know, if you can maintain above about 3 gigahertz on a core and you've got maybe two cores free, again, depending on the game, you're probably good. So, actually, I don't think there are a lot of dual cores out there anymore. No, and, actually, and if they are, they are hyper-threaded, meaning it's a quote-unquote quad core. Well, even then, <laughs> Intel's lowest core, the i3, mm -hmm. they just stopped making a dual. They just made it a quad core. Mm -hmm. Now, here, I, I got to spare a couple of moments for one of my big beefs here. Please do it. Because you just brought it up. You, you're, you're talking about Intel's i3. I've got the biggest smile on my face right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm so excited for this. I'm, I, like, I don't, I don't even start there. I feel like that's one of the... As, as much as I've stuck to the Intel brand, that is the most garbage way to buy a PC. Oh, no, it, it is. It, and I'll give you that. Like, when, I, when I'm going to buy a PC, I'm not going to go and be like, well... It's got an i3, but it's just quad core. No, I'm not going to sure. do that. Obviously, you want to look at, well, it's an i3. It's not, they don't put much effort out. Well, you, you've got to look at the benchmarks, though. Like this i3, i5, i7, i9 thing. It, it is the most general way of saying this is maybe what you can expect, but it, it doesn't tell you a thing. So here's, there's, okay, there's, I'll give, there's I'll give you that, that. Yes. Like, there, there are i3s that outclass, quote, i7s in yes. terms of real performance output especially when they they brought the the y series in mm -hmm. and in like these these are their mobile chips they're very low tdp that's that's basically you're measuring the the, the heat output how much energy it can take. anyway we won't get into all the advanced stuff here you, you you've got these i3s that outclass i7s and based on that going into a store and finding a 500 hundred dollar computer and saying oh it's got an i7 please Please don't listen to that sales guy. No, no, like, no, no, no. I, <laughs> it means the i7 nothing. doesn't mean anything. That's just it. It's just what they call it. Exactly, that really is. You you can get a vague idea based on the the, the number of threads it's got, uh, gigahertz, both the the base and the max processing speed, in which gigahertz. is what gigahertz is. So let, exactly. let's clarify that gigahertz is the speed. But even still. That doesn't tell you a lot. This is where my Intel thing comes from. Not just like, how does it feel? But mm -hmm. you, there, if you look at the real calculations of what a processor is capable of, even that doesn't tell you enough because to determine what its real performance is, you also have to know how many cycles there are per instruction. That changes based on chips even from the same manufacturer. So two, two cores from the same manufacturer that have the same base and max clock speed, same number of threads, can still have very different performance. So the the other best thing I look at is TDP. If you really want to That's get into thermal it. displacement property or something like that, I don't even remember what it stands for. I, th but I think you're correct. It, it's basically how many watts it's drawing at any given time. Like in a mobile processor, you're you're, you're maybe drawing seven and a half to fifteen. Like on mm -hmm. a Surface Pro, I, I think they're rated about fifteen watts. Okay. Whereas my my current laptop. It's running six cores, 12 threads uh, at 45 watts, which is pretty good for a laptop. Uh, so that, that gives me, it's, it's still not the whole story, 
but it gives me a better idea how's my processor going to stack up against something in your tablet, even though they've got very similar numbers. Mm -hmm. Well, which, which also brings up another one, because if you're actually going to use it with the th with the output of the wattage, it's going to heat up. Yeah. So you want to actually make sure, which brings us to our, ne um, our next point, which is going to be into it really quickly, cooling. you got to make sure. sure that you can cool that thing. Pre-builds for the win. Well, <laughs> Pre-builds for the Pre -build. win. Yeah, <laughs> actually, that I think is the number one thing that stresses me out when I do a new build. Yeah. Is uh, you, you got to have a cooler on that processor. You, you yeah. really do. Because, okay, so uh, funny stories. With the pre-built you had me, it worked out in the middle of winter. Nice. <laughs> once, it, once it got warmer, I was like, oh, my gosh. I've only got this. I've got this one chassis with this dinky little fan that's pulling out. That's why I had to upgrade the chassis. To but, be fair, we won't name brands per se, but... Oh, that's why I haven't said it. That's it, why I haven't it, said it. It is the throw it at the wall and see what sticks brand. So we did yeah. expect something. I, 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 and you did say that when I bought it because I remember you saying, saying Albatross, and that's not what he said. Albatross, I know you're used to looking at a PC, and I was like, yeah. We were at Best Buy, and he goes, this would be perfect for you. Throw an SSD in there, you're great. So I threw an SSD, upgraded my RAM, it was great. Yeah. I think I spent an extra... 150 doing that because I got them on sales and I got the pre built on sales and it was great. You know what? First PC was good, but cooling, you got to make sure you can cool it. But I yep. mean, you're right with that processor. Now, if you're thinking about Intel versus AMD, uh, something to also know is AMD, it gets hotter than, than Intel. It, it does get hotter. Like on my server when I'm using it, I'm like, wow, you're, you're only doing one process. It, I'm like, why are you getting so hot? <laughs> and I had to look it up. They actually just naturally get hotter and that's okay. Yeah, they're designed to do that. They also have a, a larger wattage draw, if yes. you compare, yep. which is another reason why people do go toward Intel, because the less power you draw in, the cooler the process. Yeah, and so you be. said your laptop pulls out, and your laptop's more powerful than my server. <laughs> what is what does yours pull out? You said uh, On the processor, it's 45. See, mine is, uh, I got the AMD, no, I got the Ryzen 5 2500U. I think that's what it was because you helped me put it together. And that pulls out 95 watts. Okay. And so, I mean, I'm getting up there and I'm looking at it because I got this this program called coretemp.exe. Core temp so I wanted to see what is each thread doing. Sure. And I'm like, holy crap, why are you already at like 81 Celsius? Like that was, that was, I was freaking out. I'm like, my Intel does not get that hot. And then that's when I read up, oh, AMD gets hotter. Okay, so this this is fine. This is this is fine. But, but again, to remember, they're designed for a, running a little warm. And and that's part of what's kept them out of the mobile space, though, is, mm -hmm. is they because they can't just like switch off parts of the processor, similar to what Intel will do on some of theirs. That's that extra heat and the extra power draw is part of what's kept them from being as successful in the mobile space as what Intel has. So which that's is, that's part of what they're working on. Which is right. funny because a AMD is actually was it AMD or Ryzen? Or they're, they're the same thing, right? AMD Ryzen, yeah, Ryzen. Okay, is that, that's a... what I thought. I was like, I was like, why why am I getting that way? Anyways, okay. I, Okay, AMD actually just opened up making processors for data centers. Nice. Not they are, just. They released a new Epic, okay, which yes. is their, their brand. True. So, like, AMD as a company has Ryzen as a consumer. Yes, and yes. Then and then Epic, Epic as the data center. Yes. So yeah, they, but they're now making a processor strictly for servers. I'd heard about that. It, made, it just made me so giddy because I'm like, I've got, a, I've, I've got my own little server. i got my gaming I'm just like, ooh, different, it's something it's new. Notable. It's different just a server. They're truly different types of servers. It's a personal yeah. server, not a server anybody can just get onto. So, yep. anyways, so cooling again is a weird one because uh, liquid versus air. You know, I I'm gonna be honest here. I, if you have a well ventilated chassis, yeah. you don't need to worry about the liquid cooling, especially like we were saying. Most games are not that intensive on the processor on the yeah. CPU. And we'll get to where you need to focus most of your heat. So, And CPU coolers in general have gotten better. Yeah. And to be honest, if you are seriously thinking about liquid cooling, you probably already know everything we've said today. And, and that's another really good <laughs> or, point to or bring up. Or you should know. I was going <laughs> to... a lot of research I to was going to say, you know, when you said TDP, I don't remember what that is. And I said, I think it's this. Okay. Like, we are going to get flamed so hard. There's something probably. big that I wanted to say before we go, before we get into cooling, because that... I, I like cooling because I had to do so much research on that when mm -hmm. I was like, over. but when it comes to processors, again, don't just go out and buy an i7, i9, that, that doesn't matter. Actually check the specs. Again, as Cobalt said, an i3, that's it's just a title. The specs will actually show you which is better. You check don't the need, benchmarks. you really don't need to go out and get the highest. You don't need to get a Ryzen no. 5, Ryzen 7, Ryzen 9. Check the specs. 
what it is. Some of them are actually meant for gaming. Some of them are, are not. It's just the way that they are. You don't need to get the, the, the biggest, baddest processor ever. Check the specs. Figure out what works for you. Yep. So, like, I have the 2700X from okay. Horizon. But the reason I have that is because I do streaming. I do all my podcast editing on that machine while I play and those type of things. So I wanted to make sure that it could do anything and everything whenever I wanted it to happen. But even then, you 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 didn't go with the, uh, what was it? Uh, the next that, step was, that was the highest at the time. Oh, at the time? Okay, I'm yeah, like... The, the second generation. The no, 3700X is out now. Okay, and that's true. And they have true. the 3900, okay. but anyway. Sure. I, thought anyway. You bought, I thought you built that one right when that came out. No, it was a year before the third okay, gen. Okay, okay. Not, and not to cut off any further discussion on that, but if I were to summarize my points on that, it's that even the highest end games don't need anything crazy. Even exactly. if you're multitasking, it doesn't need anything crazy. So don't go buy some server grade processor. Don't mm -hmm. don't buy some top of the line i9. Really, the only reason to do that is if you want the extra PCIe threads. And again, if you know what that means, you already know what you're doing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah and we'll get into what that means later. Because if you if if I'm being honest, I have an Intel i5. Quad core, not hyper threaded, works fine. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Does everything else, I can stream my game, play my game. I can have my chat up. I've got my audio on Discord going. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, but I've got Google Chrome open sometimes too. Dead gum at Albatross. <laughs> but in general, even laptop processors can handle most of this. Well, so the games, yeah. Pretty much any desktop processor will be fine. Even in laptops, know what you've got. But depending on Check the game, your specs first. You'll be good. Yep. So just blanket statement here let's just go with it's hard to find a dual core so if you have four cores and you're running between three and four gigahertz you're probably going to be oh, fine you'll be fine for anything yeah, yeah. i mean there you, you can even still find intel pentium processors please don't say that word in this house <laughs> <My bad. laughs> even those will Wait, run is it most is not what you just found four of the other day in your house in my no those were athlons oh okay yeah no, uh, Bleen thought they were when I showed him and he, I said, do you know what these are? He's like, are they those? Like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> At least they're not Celerons. All right. Like, we do have to bring that up. Then <laughs> let's, just, let, let's move on. Okay, going yeah. back to cooling. Okay. Airflow versus liquid cooling. Uh, kind of like uh, Jihadre said, I don't care that much. Again, if you're building that performant a system that you are really seriously considering liquid cooling uh, and would actually benefit from it, you probably, again, already know all of this anyway. The 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 one possible exception that I feel like a, a semi-casual mm -hmm. gamer could do just fine uh, I do like some of the the pre-built kits for GPUs. There are there are liquid cooled GPUs with closed loop coolers. Okay, we need to go over GPU that real quick. is graphical processing unit, so that's a graphics card or a video card. Okay, Perfect. so now explain CPU. Central processing unit. It's Perfect. a processor. Yeah. So the CPU is your normal processor. The GPU, which we're gonna get to after cooling, we'll get to that. Yeah, and and basically what's what's happening with any liquid cooled system is you've got in, instead of air you've got liquid flowing over the components that are are going to be uh, heating up. Uh, that's going through some sort of loop to a radiator or a set of fans or whatever. You can buy systems that that have that set up for just the processor or mm -hmm. just the GPU that that are relatively easy to install for for that that intermediate gamer, the one who wants to get into hardware but right. may not want to run custom coolant tanks and loops well, and all and, that. And that's the great part is they, they now have is hermetically the right term? Sealed. Yeah. So that you don't you don't mess with any of the liquid. It doesn't break it. You don't need to clean it. You don't need to anything and you can yep. just install it. And that would be the safest way to go about uh, liquid cooling for the first time. Now, I think liquid cooling, if you, if I'm being honest, because like like you said, even professional game, well, you didn't say this, but even professional gamers, when you're watching like the League of Legends Championship, I don't see that with liquid cooling. No, it's because it's unnecessary. Exactly. I in my okay. Here's what I was gonna say. In my opinion, liquid cooling is more for show and just because <laughs> you can. All right, and that actually, uh, when we get into graphics cards, we'll, we'll bring that up again about for show and stuff oh because there, there are a couple of things that that need to be discussed. I'm I'm serious about. No, this. I, I I know I know we, we've had this conversation. Yeah, before, you and I have. A, where you look at me you're every right time and you go, "Why?" And I'm like, "Because I can." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cooling, I feel like, is just something you need to get a feel for, though. There yeah. are some applications where liquid cooling will give you more consistency. 
so if you are staying at very high temps for very long periods of time, which honestly is not usually gaming. Uh, yeah. there, there are other applications where you're going to be running your GPU or your CPU full tilt for a prolonged period. Google Chrome. <laughs> that's RAM. That's I RAM. know, but it still heats up. It's still RAM gets hot <laughs> all right, too. All right. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> While that's a fair point, it's usually a minor concern as long as you got enough airflow. The and if, enough RAM. If you don't need that consistency, which is usually not from just gaming, liquid cooling is usually unnecessary. I agree. And I know some people will disagree, but again, if you think about it, if if you if you got your computer in a good space, I wouldn't put it on like a carpet floor. Hmm. I, I looked right at you. Just from yeah, the dust. don't do just, that. Just, just from the dust. I mean, look at where mine's at. You can just see the. I'm so see glad it. that you're telling our audience that has zero visuals to look where I'm that all, is. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> if you looked at my PC right now, because I've got a kid that runs in there, he's throwing blankets around, he's throwing everything around. You can see my dust vent mm -hmm. right on the front. It's got a giant just circle right where it's at. But it'd be even worse if it's on the floor. Definitely. It really is. But you don't have any kids running around, so you're probably better off than me. Yeah, mine's, mine's on the carpet. It really is. Moral but of the, the story, don't don't put any desktop on the floor, please. I've, I've cleaned up too many computers that died from that. Oh, and that's another big thing. With cooling, you've got to make sure your computer is clean. you got you got to take it apart helps. and dust it out once in a while. Yeah. It, yeah. Even with laptops, don't don't be putting those on top of your bed or something like that. Like, make sure it's got enough airflow and that you occasionally clean it out. Okay, and going off of cooling with airflow... What? What? Go ahead, go Before ahead. anyone goes and <laughs> swiffers the inside of their can. No, 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 no. no. It's, it's canned air. You gotta get the proper canned air too. Canned air. You, okay. No one go vacuuming or oh, swiffering on the inside of your computer. That will fry your electronics. There and it will is ruin actually things. a video of a wife that went out and she actually just started vacuuming her husband's computer oh, and God. destroyed it. It is hilarious. Yeah, oh. it's. it's I mean, it's That's totally. Sad. Stage because it's recorded, obviously. But I'm, anyway, <laughs> did, before someone tries that, we are not saying that's how you do that. It's with canned air and it's unplugged, turned off. Yes, you you unplug it. You turn. Wait, hold on. You turn it off. You turn off the switch <laughs> on the power supply. You unplug it. You walk away. You not, give it a minute. Okay. Yeah. Give it a minute to cool down because the motherboard <laughs> has capacitors inside that are holding a charge for a little bit. You gotta let that, you know, kind of go out of there. So just give push it the power a couple minutes. It'll, 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 and then you can use the air. They have instructions on the can. We don't need to go over that because we're talking hardware. But you, you are right. <laughs> don't you need do to clean a Swiffer. Yeah, don't. Don't do a Swiffer. Don't vacuum it out. Don't submerge it in water either. Or oil or whatever. No else. kind of liquid. You, you can tell which of us work in data centers because I'm listening to this. Is like, man, I had no idea this was akin to surgery. Oh my god, <laughs> it really yes. is. It just don't get me started on some of the things we see out there. It's pretty bad. Oh Good man. Times. Okay. Anyways, you, you, you don't need to handle it like it's a patient. Okay. Anyways, be careful. Don't swiffer. Well, now, when you're going off airflow, that's 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 when the chassis comes in place. Um, there are different size fans that you can use. You got to make sure they're going the correct direction too. I was gonna bring that up. I, I, I had a good buddy who got a liquid cooled GPU, and he pointed the fans the wrong way because he wasn't paying attention. Oh it was no! Funny. <laughs> it didn't condensate, did it? It, it, it didn't kill anything, but okay. uh, it, it could have been close. Now, his now his temps were not up, benefiting because we did talk about liquid cooling. There, there is actually a liquid that they developed out of that is anti-static. You can actually submerge the entire system mm -hmm. inside of it. Yeah, yeah, but again, if you're at that point, you this podcast is it's, worthless. It's this episode, it's entertaining. Oh, okay, entertainment value may be <laughs> these fools. <laughs> they know not what they speak. Okay. okay, so I was gonna say we skipped over one one thing because I think GPU needs to be last because that one's gonna be a good one. I so think. then we need to go back to memory. Memory. Okay, so again, we've we've already talked about. Um, so you've got there's two different types of memory. You got what you wanted to put your like your actual data on. And that's then storage. That's storage. So, but I mean, some people call it memory. Okay, gotta, but they're wrong. <laughs> we work in a data center. We know this. Yeah. But like, consumers <laughs> consistently say, do you know how many times I've gone to Best Buy and they're like, you memory? I'm like, yes. Like, oh, I'm like, I know more than you. I did not want... I did not want a hard drive. Oh, yeah, sure. It's it's because of the analogy of how a computer works. It's, it's how it's explained to them. Or on phones, but memory but is almost always analogous to storage. They should know. I, okay. I agree. I'm sorry. I, it, I love making fun of Geek Squad. So then memory. <laughs> memory. So RAM. What you got RAM. Now, what does RAM stand for? Random access memory. Awesome. 
And if we get esoteric on it later, it's just because of the, the way it's storing things. But we'll... No, again, I didn't ask you that because I didn't know. I just... Well, You're good. Are you <laughs> sure? I, I knew what that All meant. right, so uh, here's the way it works. You, everything you save goes on your your hard drive or your solid state. And your storage. It's, yeah, because your it's storage. Persistent. Yeah, it's called ROM, read-only memory. Now, now, what you open gets pulled off of that hard drive and put into your RAM and can then be changed. Anything you have open is open in and changes in your RAM. When you hit save, it puts it back on your ROM. And that's a very basic way of of thinking about it. So that those are the main differences. You can't ch- quote unquote change what's on your storage unless it's up in RAM. Which is why you actually have to have RAM. Okay, okay. Yeah, look at look at him tilting have, his head. He I've got something on my me. mind too that he said months ago. I've actually got it's. A, go ahead, go ahead. I'll, I'll say. I'll just. Oh, you're good. Zip. Well, we we can done. we can use that as a basic model. Good enough. Basic Obviously, model. you can write to your hard drive. Otherwise, nothing would ever change. Or get well, installed. it's via the RAM, though. Uh, then you've got page file memory and all these other ways that it's interacting with a hard drive. Come on, man. We're doing basic hardware. You're, no, it's, you're it's right. Okay. It's okay. It's the, okay. The most important thing in my mind is the speed. Yes. Uh, on a processor, the most expensive thing a processor has to do in terms of time and energy, is go out and find information. Uh, that's that's why RAM is is physically close and, and wired directly to the processor, is because RAM can be accessed so much faster. If it has to go clear out to the hard drive for information that isn't loaded in the RAM yet, that is a much longer and more expensive operation. Especially when you're using a hard disk drive versus like the solid, oh, absolutely. The solid state. Yeah, because then you've got to get, the, there, there's more time for, for the, the information to come off the hard drive and get loaded into memory from memory to the processor. Agreed. Absolutely. So it's it's not like, we'll, we'll, we'll take that as a basic model. About basic speed. model? No, no, no. Yeah. You can talk about speed forever. Let, let's talk about something simpler real quick. Sure. Size. Capacity. Capacity. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> you're not you, can, you, I, you said basic okay, I try, but if you're let's just go ahead and say if you're on Newegg and you're looking for memory it doesn't say capacity, size you're it right, says I capacity I'm just going off of what, this, what people people talk okay. Alvatraz is getting shredded here today folks <laughs> <laughs> well it's funny because when, t- when we're at work we're always talking like all like all these actual mechanics the actual verbiage of, of this and I understand it but when you actually walk out of there, it's like, let me just dumb this down for you. Oh, you, you do our listeners a disservice. I'm sorry. Yikes. Okay, well, here, 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 <laughs> here's, here's the reason why. And, and not everybody's like that. Like, for example, I'm not going to say his name, but my uncle, when I was building a media server, just something to access movies and music, I told him, I got, he, he was like, oh, you built that? That's awesome. How much RAM did you put in there? I said, eight gigs. He goes, What? <laughs> only eight gigs i'm like well, technically you only need like two but um yeah eight he goes what only eight and i was like yeah he goes dude you need like 16 i'm like gosh you're living in the past and he mm. went to his computer school for all this but he's still living in like 1990s the ddr age i want to know how he got 16 gigs of ram in the 1990s yeah I right don't. <laughs> you're like, you're like <laughs> so you get 16 megs it's because but, but like he keeps getting I get into it he, well he keeps getting into like like when i bring up something new because my family always goes to him when they have computer problems because set my aunt she's like you're an idiot brother because i'm not gonna use any names and she wants me to build her pc now because she looks at mine she goes what you built that? I'm like, yeah, isn't it pretty? And she says how fast it is. Um, I got another story later that's gonna go off of another topic. But anyways, so size or capacity. Well, you use both. Sides. A lot of people say size. Some people say capacity. The proper tr- verbiage. Verbiage. Good word of the day. Nice. Verbiage. That the proper verbiage is capacity. Thank you. That's, now, you're making fun of me with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm going off on this too much. Just go. So what what kind of capacity do you need for gaming? So Alvatross brought up a good point with, you know, the certainly more is better in some cases. Um, but there is overkill. Your yes. Your your OS is important on this. It's again how much you're running in the background, <clears throat> Chrome. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry. <laughs> for anybody that's wondering now, I only use 16 gigs RAM on my gaming PC. Fair enough. So, and, and Chrome's and the, not as bad as they're making it out to be, but it is still bad. Yeah, it, it just, of the browsers, takes more per tab. It's not that on its own it's bad. It's no, just that it, 
the the way it runs and the way it processes things, it, it stores so much information per tab that it just tends to bloat. I can't really make fun of that anymore because Edge is now going to be based on Chrome. I know I'm probably really weird. Is it really? Edge. Uh, it's not like for everyone yet, but there's a, a beta release of Edge on Chromium and it's actually pretty good. So just like I'm a brand guy, you're a Microsoft brand guy, oh, which like explains it. your Edge fascination. I don't like it. I'm, I'm not in the majority at all on that. I realize you know most we of the world runs that, on Chrome. Right? Yeah, and I've... Uh, we, we could get into this and make this a three-hour conversation. I, I like looking at, at some of the policies and ethics of various companies. And I will admit part of my bias is, is getting burned by some brands. Yeah, all right. There, there's a little bit of, you were the chosen one oh. in, in a few of my brands. <laughs> I'm reliving decisions. memories with this conversation. Right now. <laughs> okay, so then let's move back to I'm our just memory. kidding. I'm just kidding. No, okay. we, we really this is, so. this is what you guys talk about all the, and I love it because when I started getting into PC world, I'm getting you tugging me one way, you tugging me the other way, and I'm like, okay, now I've got to pick for myself and I've got to just get the dirty looks from the other person right. that didn't like it. So back to the memory. <laughs> here's, here's why all that came in. This this is all coming back around to something. Mm -hmm. The OS matters a lot as to, to how much you need for what. So, for example, in general, no, the OS is operating system. Yeah, Thank I was going to say, you've got different operating systems. Now, the basic three, you've got Linux. Don't game all that. Well, That's hold on. That's not basic number one. Number two, there are it. Okay, I'm just gonna say that <laughs> the, the three Linux. most the three most common. Okay, any distro of Linux. Yes. And Next you, is Microsoft. So you got Windows. Yes. Which currently they're running Windows 10, and then you've just got Apple, which is just called Mac OS 10. I was gonna say that. My bad. You, it looked like you were pausing. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say it. I'm, I'm going to get after you both because that wasn't in any logical order, but that's okay. No, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> the most common is Windows 10. And then Mac iOS, and then you've got Linux. Mac OS. Yes. iOS is on the... Oh, sorry. You're right. iOS. I'm sorry, I have an iPhone. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And no, and this is a great example because in general, like this, this is an easy analogy. Phones, which basically everyone's familiar with, iOS... Apple devices can get away with a lot less RAM because the operating system doesn't need it as much. It's, it's super it's simple. very memory efficient. Whereas Androids, you need as much RAM as a PC sometimes. Don't, yes. get away don't, with give, me don't, don't give me started on Android right now. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're on hardware here talking memory <laughs> and a desktop. Just for analogy, we, we could all get into that one. Yeah, we could. So that's, that's an analogy. So it's in Windows, iPhone. over time, <laughs> we, we had this interesting thing where XP was, was fairly efficient. Seven was all right, but you more demanding. Vista. Well, On purpose. I, I know, but I just... <laughs> just it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> we, we, we went into up, up to eight. Eight was pretty RAM hungry, to be mm -hmm. honest. Then we went back to 10, and 10 was a, a better step for efficiency. I do not recommend to anyone, no matter what you're doing with it, to buy a computer with less than four gigs of RAM these days. I agree. That's actually really smart. Yeah, because you're you're going to need about two baseline to keep the operating system happy. Because again, go, having to go to the hard drive for information takes makes everything take literally exponentially longer. Now, there is actually a program that. that you showed me when I was like like I said when I was getting bigger into the PC world. Because again, my family is a console family we didn't sure. know that that you showed me where i could actually see how much ram i actually had and was currently using yeah and, and almost any operating system is going to have some sort of resource resource manager in windows it's it's built into task manager you just oh, so you can right click in the bar at the bottom go to task manager if you haven't done this before you may have to click the nice little advanced button you're going to get some tabs across the top and you can look at the performance of different components of your computer it's one of my favorite tabs and again if you need help or assistance with it let us know at juhadre at albatross 17 do you have a twitter uh, i do i think it's just at cobalt right still like we were going to bring this okay, up okay we'll, we'll get to it we'll get to that okay, we'll get uh, to it later when, just... when we do our outro we say all of our social media and everything and that's going to be a great time to tell that story we'll, we'll hit that story but later so then. uh capacity wise no less than four gigabytes oh, never. of memory at least and, on windows yes on windows uh none of us use macs and if you're using a mac to game i think you're in a again you're in the wrong podcast you are in the wrong podcast okay now Mac did actually just come out with one that was supposed to be better for gaming, but it's still, I would not recommend going that direction. And I want to, I want to fix what I just said there. You're in the wrong podcast is not what I meant. Ah, this particular episode does not apply explicitly to you, but I hope you do continue to the, listen because I love you. The biggest reason why on that is because, is, well, first off, 
the OS isn't really built to do that per se, even though technically the end result's the same. Mm -hmm. But with Macs, parts are not as interchangeable as like our gaming PCs. So it depends on the Mac. Quick survey here. Uh, uh, in this room, has anyone else owned a Mac? I have a Mini in my basement That's right true. Now. You've got a Mac Mini? You, oh, you do. Uh, yeah, you do. That's right. They're, they're not terrible. The big difference is, again, market share. This is the same issue Windows had with, you know, the, the poor Windows phone, which we also won't get into. Uh, rest in peace. <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah, that phone. we won't get into it. I can't <laughs> handle it right now. It's it's whether or not the software is built for that platform. Which is true, because, like, if you're going to go into media editing, Macs are fantastic for that. But gaming, not so much. Eh, again, it but depends. Again, off track here. Agreed. So now we've got our well, again, again, again. The world is changing. Let's start. Let's start there. Base. We'll, we'll, we'll stop that. Sure. Baseline, four gigs for basically any system. It's like Linux is probably the most efficient because it's mm -hmm. depending on what version of Linux you're running. This is like saying I have an Android phone. It means nothing without being a lot more specific. Exactly. Uh, in general, it's going to be a lot more lightweight. Um, Mac OS is probably kind of following in iOS's footsteps. The next best windows is probably the heaviest on memory, but it's also got, in my opinion, it's, it's, it's justified. Mm -hmm. Start with four gigs for a gaming machine. Memory is more important for gaming. Cause again, as if you can load up more of the program into the Ram, instead of having to go back to the hard drive for it, your in particular, your load times are going to be better. Correct. So I feel like for gaming, Eight gigs is a good amount to shoot for. And so you'll notice we're talking four, eight, 16. Everything's I have powers 32. Of two. And, yeah. and the reason for that is just the way that everything is sold. You can't buy three gigs of RAM. Oh, yeah. It's no, I, weird. I love like, opening up an old computer and finding like five gigs of RAM. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> my, my, my machine right now has the 32. Again, I overkilled. I did it on purpose. Sure. Whatever. Yeah, you, you had money to blow. We, but that was actually a really fun project to watch you do. Yeah, a lot of fun. I can post pictures of that if you at me at Juhadre. Anyway, um, going back, my machine before that, I got a free four gig stick. So I had 12. Cool. And there's nothing wrong with that. No. You just got to make sure that they match up. And, and that's what we need to talk about. The things that need to match up is your speed and your timing. Yeah. So your speed, we're at DDR4 right now, and so, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think standard is 2400 megahertz? Yep. That's 2.4 gigahertz. That's standard DDR4. Uh, most processors are going to run better. I believe it's 3600 for the newest Ryzen's. Okay. But look for a motherboard that has parentheses OC 3600, because the standard will go from 24 to maybe 3,300. Ram shopping's sometimes a finicky thing. Like I feel like when you when you start looking at all the numbers, that's one of the most intimidating things for a brand I can see new that. PC builder. I can see that. Uh, and there are lots of good tools for that. It's not something you need to be intimidated by. It, as long as you do it right, you're just going to plug it in and it's going to work, and you're going to forget about it. So exactly. especially if you're new to this, find a parts picker, find a compatibility program of some sort. There's lots of good free ones online. Mm -hmm. And as long as they match, you're probably going to be okay. Exactly. And so I think that those that's going to be it on memory because we're already going a lot longer than our, our last six that's episodes. Fine. I do actually want to throw fine. something in oh, on that okay. real quick. So again, from the pre-built perspective, uh, one thing that, that is really obvious when you're building your own machine that is hardly ever listed when you're getting, when you're buying something that's already built is, is how many memory channels you've got. Oh gosh. Uh, I forgot about that. That's, that's kind of important, which is basically think of it. If we want to make an analogy, it's how many roads there are from the Ram to the processor. Uh, for, so if, if you're building something like a basic motherboard might have two channels, uh, a gaming focused motherboard might have four. Mm -hmm. uh, on laptops, this is something that's really important because a lot of times, even if a laptop has two channels, they're they're just picking these up off an assembly line and saying, okay, this, this SKU or this particular model is gonna have this much RAM and they'll throw one stick in. You can only have one channel with one stick. Even if there's two channels on the motherboard, if you're not using, both slots, mm -hmm. you only get the performance of one channel. So, want to throw that in at the end. Which, if you're looking at pre-builds, read the reviews, find some place that goes in-depth enough to make sure they're actually using all of the RAM channels available. Now, now, uh, important as well as we go on that, this is something that Juhadri told me when I was building that PC, is 
let's say you do want to go with eight gigs of RAM, that doesn't, because of what you're saying with the channels, mm -hmm. it's better to get two four gig sticks than it is just one eight. Take whatever capacity you want, and in general, divide that by the number of channels. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if you want 16 gigs, you want four four gig sticks. If you have a four channel machine. Right, 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 exactly. right, right. Wait, I mean, my channel, the, the, uh, to dumb that down, because I need to dumb it down when I first was getting into this as well, that just means you got four slots. Not necessarily. No. No. It, it's it's usually the boards will have different colors for the different channels or yes, slots yes. to make this easy. The, with with your motherboard, it will always have some sort of documentation that says, you know, put put the RAM in in these slots in this order. These, these slots A one B one A two B two. Yeah, yep. I I do remember seeing this. It occupied these slots. If you're gonna have two, this one if you have one. Mm -hmm. So again, yeah. it's it's something that looks really intimidating the first time, but it's not that bad. Just no. be aware of those different. Actually, after 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 I built that pre built, I was I was like so excited to build that other one. They're actually super easy now that you helped me build that server. Mm -hmm. For any of you listeners out there looking to build your own, it's actually really fun. They're it's not a lot of fun, <clears throat> but more expensive. Sometimes. <laughs> and so this is this is where the the it all culminates because the most expensive part of a custom build machine is the graphics card. Oh, Every time. the argument that Juhadre and I have so much. Oh come on! Well, it's because. I'm a, it's because I'm a brand guy, no, all right? Well, I'll throw it out that, there. That's for you, but I was going to say it's because because I can. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, with your graphics card, Cobalt, uh, two main players again. Yep. Now, we, we need to say that there are two main chip manufacturers, but for there now. are so many brands that use those two chips that we're not going to go into that. Correct. That's just... Way that's a whole nother that's a whole nother podcast and it's right. so subjective too like it then, really is. then you're really getting into brands and you you just have to look at the bench you really get nitpicky that at that point oh yeah yeah so our our two chip makers are again amd but nvidia instead of intel correct and now they uh, although intel's getting into the game they, they are getting into the game well, okay but let's back off that oh, yeah, okay. because, because again they're, they're not podcast they're... idea uh, uh so i'm a, it's the same argument as AMD versus Intel for your processor. AMD, pardon me, is going to be a little bit cheaper. Yep. And your performance per dollar is usually a better ratio. In general. Usually. And I, in general, usually those are the things I like to use. However, the leading number one brand is still NVIDIA. Correct. And I've, in our conversations, have countered typically with features and with consistency mm -hmm. as my reasons, because the just just the performance numbers don't usually tell the whole story. Right. And again, typical of AMD, they tend to run warm. Yep. They draw more power. Yep. And they're still slightly less. But... Now, when you say they're slightly less, what do you exactly mean Slightly less powerful. There you go. Yeah. So, again... So I wanted to clarify, are you talking about like less right, money, right. less powerful... And so, it, what's so much fun to me is AMD is, is they're on this surge with their 5700 XT. They are quote unquote competing with the 2070 Super. Yep. Which is the the Nvidia, also quote unquote equivalent. And it's it's incredible because they have been behind for as long as they've been behind Intel. We're talking nine to ten years. Sure. And so did, when they you really made a big jump, it's huge. they really did. No, it it I got I got a oh stand both there. It's, companies over the last couple of years, and that's what makes this so exciting. Regardless of whether you care about the brand or not, mm -hmm. they're pushing each other. Like the the last couple of years have been really funny to see Nvidia have to show off what they've actually been working on because mm -hmm. AMD will come up with this great thing, Nvidia will say ha. We had this great technology that we weren't going to show off, but look, we have it. <laughs> like, I, I feel like they got really lazy for a couple of years. Well, why wouldn't you? I, I would I would say so. Yeah, it's all about the dollar. Yeah. So it's okay. it's really nice to see them pushing each other. I agree. Okay, I, I, sh I shouldn't be saying this because it's kind of a little off topic, but it's about the topic. It's funny that you guys say that with money because NVIDIA was actually starting to lose money because people were going to AMD. Mm-hmm. One of the biggest reasons, and we're not going to get too far into it, was also because you got the G Sync and Free Sync features. Yes. Oh, NVIDIA, beautiful. because people are going Free Sync, it's a free feature that comes in a monitor, uh, gaming monitors that come with it. Whereas NVIDIA, again, it itself costs more, but so does the program that you want to match up with it. And so it's, it's my turn to actually pause okay, okay, you fine, for okay, explanation. Okay. 
Free sync and G sync are both what we call adaptive sync. So your monitor is putting out a certain number of frames per second. Uh, so for a standard monitor, standard <laughs> monitor. <laughs> wow. Oh. I can really pronounce things today. A monitor. Uh, your your standard's about sixty hertz, mm -hmm. uh, which it means it's sixty frames per second, roughly. Uh, what these uh, adaptive sync technologies are doing is when you're when you're getting these frames, if you're in the middle of drawing one and your monitor gets a new frame of information from the computer, it'll immediately start drawing the new one. So if you're you're moving quickly and if you've got good eyes, you're just paying attention, you can see objects kind of start to tear is what the word is, or they're, they're just kind of splitting apart because yeah. if you're moving, the, the part of the object's drawn in one place on the screen, and then it's drawn, you know, maybe even just a few millimeters to the side and a few more, a few more as you go down. You, you can have a couple of frames drawn in the same refresh of your monitor. This adaptive sync, what it's doing is it's making sure that it draws one frame and then the next one and the next one and does that by matching up this refresh rate between your monitor and your graphics card. Now, NVIDIA does G-Sync. AMD does free sync. Correct. But the, okay, so going back to what I was saying is NVIDIA was actually going to start was starting to lose money because people were like, well, I'm going to go with AMD because of that. So well, the free sync monitors were much cheaper. For, well, for that, and that's that's why is because you can get you can get first off the AMD graphics card was cheaper, so it was mm -hmm. a processor, and then the monitors were cheaper. I mean, I've got a free sync monitor. That one was. Yeah. I'm just going to tell. I'm not going to say what I actually paid because I didn't actually pay this price. But that one's 350 and then the exact same monitor, but with G-Sync, which is what NVIDIA uses, because I have NVIDIA, because I wanted to test them both. Yeah. 750 just because of the G-Sync feature. It's that much more. But anyways, going back to it, NVIDIA actually had to give an update to their graphics cards to open themselves up to a few of the free sync monitors so that they would actually use the adaptive sync through there. Yep. And then Cobalt comes out and says, oh, well, they also just came up with FreeSync 2. Which is also correct. Which is what I'm running. <laughs> Wait, you're actually... Oh, no, you did buy that. That's my right. yeah, my card's free sync as well. So, <laughs> or my, my monitor, that is. But my graphics card, which is NVIDIA, does not like free sync. It was not open to that one. Not that monitor. So no. then... Uh, Going back to what you're saying. Those are, those are really good things to know. Because when later when you start buying monitors, that's a good thing to recognize is whether your graphics card does or does not support those features. The biggest thing oh, yeah. is, is once you actually get that graphics card and start using the adaptive sync, whether it be G-Sync or FreeSync, you're not going to want to go back to a monitor without it, it. it. Oh my gosh, it hurt my brain. So you finally used it. Oh, oh yeah. So it was disabled on my first monitor. And okay. then I, I bought myself a brand new one, a big old 27 inch 2K because you it, was, know, it was on sale. I'm a boss. And, and, and here's here's the warning to our listeners on that. Like, as soon as you have a nice monitor, you will be a monitor snob. It's, it's actually it's an entertainment. Yes, fish. you will. It's, it's oh. all subconscious. <laughs> okay, he's calling me out because I've got my nice little 49-inch Samsung monitor. I like how you home. said nice little. It's 49 inches, dude. It is the size <laughs> all monitors okay. have always wanted to be. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime you get something new, he's always like, oh, yeah, I actually got this now. Okay, but anyways, going back to graphics cards or GPUs themselves. Let's go yeah, back to that. So well, what are the let, things? Let me finish my warning. Okay, fine. Sorry, not to cut you off. That's right. that's <laughs> the, the, the whole point of that was if you haven't had it, you're, you're going to sit down in front of a super nice monitor that someone else is using, and you're probably going to say, eh, it's all right, that's cool. It's like the first time you try on a really nice pair of headphones. You may or may not get it from the first use, and but once you've had it, you you just can't handle going back. Like if you go from a, a, having a 4K monitor to just a, a full HD monitor of the same size and you go back, you're like, man, this looks really bad. It didn't beforehand, mm -hmm. but it does now because it was nicer to your eyes. Same with the refresh rate. I, I got rid of my last nice widescreen monitor because it was slow. It wasn't even running at 60 hertz. Ah. My my new monitor. So yeah, even though it was a nice size, good resolution, it was QHD+, plus, all that fun stuff, it was slow. And so compared to my 144 hertz laptop, it felt like the cursor would hit molasses going mm -hmm. on onto my actual monitor. So the new monitor... It's, it's still an ultra wide, but now they're matched at 144 hertz, which is the 144 frames per second. You won't care until you've had it. Once you have bought it once, you will never not buy it again. So and take that. I can however attest you will. to that because the last monitor I had was only 60 hertz. Yeah. And then because you told me because when I when I was monitor shopping, Juhadre was just criticizing. Okay, so here's here's here before I go. Let, let me just put in parentheses here. 
Juhadre likes to just antagonize me when I'm buying stuff because he finds it entertaining to get me to, th- to really think hard. That's and true. It, <laughs> it That's really true. is. true. Because then I buy it and you're like, good job. And I'm yeah. like, but you gave me so much crap for it. Anyways, <laughs> Cobalt was telling me all these different specs between monitors because, again, I was still new to it. I'm, I'm still learning even though I know a lot. You're talking 144 hertz. 244 hertz and I can't go back. Yep. I'm sorry. I my buddy brought over his his I think it was 75 hertz. And I was just like, <laughs> I, I kind of want to slow clap right now, but that would sound really weird with the with the acoustics. But the it was it was just so bad. It was I was just like, dude, yeah. you need a new monitor. Like I can't do this. Bring it back because we went monitor yes. talking. Yes, yes. Good. I, I'm sorry. We we can talk this all day. Okay, but going going back GPUs. G- GPUs. What are the things that you need to look for in a GPU? I would say to some extent features right now. Um, again, historically, mm-hmm. part of the reason I've gone NVIDIA is not only because I do more pre-builds and more mobile, uh, which is where they've been a little bit more successful, uh, depending on what level in the market you're talking. Um, I, I do like some of the, the, the different features that NVIDIA have built in, and a lot of programs are built for NVIDIA cards. So the same mm-hmm. program might perform a little bit better on a NVIDIA card than a honest to goodness equivalent AMD card. And, and you're right. So then from a hardware perspective, you need to look at what type of memory, how much of it, and yes. and uh, it doesn't really have a speed. Now, are you, it, it does. Not, not actually memory. It's actually more capacity. It, it's that's... graphical memory. Yeah. That's what GDDR6 is. DDR is dual data rate, which is what memory is. See, and then I you thought you explained G. it to me different, saying that it's it's kind of like RAM again. It It is because it pulls the file off of your hard drive and puts it into your your graphics card. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so, okay. So, that's so, memory. so, so let, let's say this again. You've got your normal processor. A graphics card has its own processor. Yes, it does. So, so get a little confusion. That's it's yes. it's a different type. It, it, it is a different type. More yes. on parallelism. There's lots of small ones as opposed to a few chunky ones. Yes, like, yeah. yes. <laughs> I'm trying not to get too technical there. <laughs> right, right, right. No, you're right. Just, you, you are exactly right because that's one of the biggest differences between them, which it, which makes it so that you can't just have a process, a CPU, or yeah, just more a GPU. They are a lot more specialized, very focused no, on what they're it, doing. Because it's, it's designed strictly for gaming and exactly. video. That's what it is for. Yeah, and it does other things well because of that, whether it's machine learning or, or Bitcoin yes. mining or whatever. There's plenty of applications that anyone's probably heard of, and it's just good at doing lots of small tasks really quickly. So again, okay, so now you've got different types. You've got... Crap! I just like lost my train of thought. Cause are, like, are you talking capacity here or? No, I was just I was gonna say you've got different. Types. So you got AMD, you've got Nvidia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now they've each got their different models. Um, sure. A lot of people really think that it really makes a big difference. I just had a buddy that just went out and bought the new Nvidia twenty eighty Ti. Oh my <laughs> gosh! <laughs> Someone's why? got some money. Because he can't. Okay. Look, he's single. He doesn't have a car. No insurance. Oh, he just walks to work. See, he's got money. But anyways, I was like, why? Well, I know who you're talking about. Why? Now. Why? Actually, okay, so it's not my buddy. Oh, you, it's you actually guys, yeah, my, yeah, it's yeah, my yeah, adopted I, I brother. Know who you're oh, talking about. Okay, good. Anyways, um, so he, I was like, why? He goes, why not? I have the money. I'm like, you don't need that. I Okay, so for anybody that knows, that doesn't know, I'm running a NVIDIA Oh, is it a gig? Yeah, it's a gigabit. That's just that's just the sub brand. Like gigabyte. I said, gigabyte. Oh, is that no? It's it's pronounced gigabit, isn't it? No, is it gigabyte? Ah, it's gigabyte. You're tangenting again. No, oh, okay, fine, whatever. <laughs> it's a 1060. It's a 1060 with three gigabytes of RAM. That's that's what it is, or yeah. gigabyte processing power. Anyways, but that's what it is, and I can run everything just fine. Now, whereas he's like, well, no, you need some. You don't need the highest one. It's just. Like the 2060, that's just the next gen. Mm-hmm. Well, we've we've taken this long to really get to what makes a gaming PC as opposed to what doesn't. Everything else we've talked about is nice, but not vital. For right. gaming, this is the big one. And what you buy here will determine not only what games you can run, but how well you can run them. Exactly. So this, like... To really simplify it, if we get back to the memory that's on the graphics card, look at the number. Higher number is better. It's that simple. <laughs> and that's what's so fascinating is we talked so many nuances of 
processors with different core numbers, different frequency speeds in their gigahertz. Your memory was different and yeah. all of these other. And then finally, it just comes down to with a graphics card. The, if the number's bigger, it's going to be better. It is, but not necessarily like, like 1060, 2060. There's, no, 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 it's no the, you're it's right. The other no, I wanted to specify Yeah, that. you are definitely it's, right. It's not, uh, oh, the 2060 is going to be better than the 1060. It's a bigger number. Yes, it is going to be a little bit better. It's the next generation. It's the number underneath it that, which well, is... Well, I was talking about the RAM. So like it, that's what, that's the, where I was the going. The GDDR5 as opposed to the GDDR6. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, kind of like we were talking about, i3s can be better than i7s. Exactly. A, a 1080 is probably going to be better than a 2060 well, at like, most things. Well, you, you could have a 1060 with the 6 gigs of RAM versus the 2060 to the 3. Sure. And in general, when it comes to graphical performance, the best measure of what it's going to be capable of is that memory capacity and speed. Exactly. Exactly. There are other things that go into it, but they are not as vital as getting that one right. Correct. Exactly. And so when you are gaming, uh, most cards, I think the minimum I've seen recently on good gaming cards is four gigabytes. You, you can still buy them with two, but yeah. But I don't recommend it. No, and, and that's where we're getting. <laughs> well, it depends to. what you're doing. If you're if you're if you're playing basic things, like if you just want to play League of Legends, you can do that off a two on gig a card. Okay, you're right. You are definitely right. So I, we, we can back that up. So you've got what what we've been talking about. Really, again, you guys is you know big realm, and the only thing you guys I think even remember exists sometimes desktops. A you can run a laptop. Okay, I've been looking into the new Surface Pro Seven. Sure. So the Surface Pro doesn't really have a dedicated GPU. Oh, I'm not going to look at it for gaming, but I know no, what you mean. I know what you mean. That's fine. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. For for basic, just your 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 run of the mill. I want to play Minecraft. My brother needs you know a game to play League of Legends with me. We want to play some Rocket League on the side. That is awesome. More power to you. You're still a gamer. We're not going to diss that. Right. Exactly. <laughs> no. No. It's a game's a game. And you you don't need that level of hardware that we've been talking about for any of that. Again, so I've I've got a brother. He's in school right now. He we he and I play games together all the time. Mm -hmm. He runs Rocket League and League of Legends on a Surface Pro Five. Oh my gosh. And it works. That's that's what I'm saying. For just basic gaming, you need it. So a, a Surface Pro, we're again talking about a 15 watt, back to that mm -hmm. basic i5 processor. No GPU to speak of. The, the, the processor does both jobs. It's got a specialized graphics portion and then a, a, a CPU portion. But and that's that, a completely different subject. It's on that. true. Yep, yep. Well, and that's that's an area AMD does really well. Is those machines that don't have a GPU historically AMD APUs? Done. Yeah, which that's, is what I have in my server. Yeah, and those those are great for for that that I just want to start gaming and I just want a, a pre built system. Those are good enough. So here we're talking. Oh, you like. I wouldn't ever buy a two gig card. Well, there are people who buy no gig cards, which is true because oh they're gosh. just using the RAM. But you don't want to buy that if you're going to go out and play something bigger like Risk of Rain 2 or like something like Skyrim where it, it loads so much. See, and I've I've done that though. So this if we wanna if we wanna segue into this after hardware, there there are so many alternatives to get a good gaming experience without building the tower that we've been talking about. So but, if, if but we, we can finish off that, that topic, I, I hear you. Let's let's finish off the I'm building or buying a tower topic. Mm -hmm. You're right. Four gigs is about what you want to go for. I agree. Uh, depending on whether you're getting a, a tower or a laptop, uh, I was was really really interested. I won't get into the technical stuff and generation names and stuff. With on the, the Nvidia side, once you started with a 1000 series, that was a great generation to start buying a computer, mm -hmm. especially for me. Because the laptop cards had near parity. They were almost as good as the same named desktop cards. I remember that. That was a huge deal. It used to be if you got like a 960 for a desktop and a 960 for a laptop, the desktop one was four or five times better. Like there, there was no real comparison. Mm -hmm. And So, okay. This is kind of going to be a little funny. But do you know how to get the best experience from using your GPU? Oh. If you actually plug into it, yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> you you can still plug into. I just remember the this. You plugged into your motherboard. <laughs> I didn't know to plug it in there. At I first. did the same thing <laughs> when I first started building. Okay, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, the okay, there. Okay, so to give the background of the joke, I'm used to just plugging into the first port. I thought I actually thought HDMI was was the biggest baddest way to go. No, Display Port. So I took my HDMI cord, plugged it into my motherboard because that had its own port. And then I started playing. I was like, I why is this running so crappy? Why is it not? It's it's choppy. It's laggy. It's 
And then we looked out, oh, you didn't plug into your graphics card. Yeah. So I went and got a display port cable, and my issues were solved. So I didn't know to do that. I, at so least you new. got yours running. Mine didn't even start. Like, <laughs> I got zero picture. Yeah, sometimes if, if you've got a GPU plugged in, the, the uh, motherboard will just yeah. turn off. See, mine the, the didn't do that. Graphics. I, I could still see everything, but then I, I, mean, I started trying oh, to play games. performance would have been terrible. It was. It was horrible. All right, so... the. Again, doing a, a very roundabout or roundabout way coming down to the basic is you, you better cut this up for for our listeners. We, we I want to know how many layers deep some of our segues went. You know what? I'm gonna listen to it when I go through and remove the hum and everything like that. And I, I'll I won't keep track because I'll be doing other things. But I'm gonna listen to it and make sure everything it's it's deep. But that those are the things we wanted to talk about in hardware. Understand yeah. that the biggest baddest is mostly about just because I can. It's Basically. so true. Again, if you actually do your research, you can find something that's got the specs, it's got the performance in there with its processing power, its capacity, its speed, that outdoes what the biggest, baddest is branded. Yeah. So to further our, our conversation, if you want to learn a little bit more, there are better sources, <laughs> but you can always hit us up. I'm at Juhadre. At I'm at Albatross17. And now, Cobalt, we need to get into our final story of the night. Where can people find you? Uh, you can find me at Cobalt Wraith in everything except high res, where some dirty scoundrel was already Cobalt Wraith. <laughs> now, can you spell that? Just so, just so everybody knows. <laughs> uh, so, same as the word Cobalt. So, you got Charlie, uh, Oscar, Bravo, uh, Alpha, Lima, Tango. Mm-hmm. Got to make sure I get my phonetics right. Yeah, there's... Uh, then typically an underscore, a space in some platforms. I keep track of which ones use what. Yeah. And then Wraith, just like it sounds, type of ghost. Uh, Whiskey, Romeo, Alpha, Indigo, uh, Tango, Hotel. Okay. Nice word. It's so funny you say Cobalt, just as it's spelled, because uh, it's not. I have Cobalt tools. They're spelled with a K. Uh, Yikes. Uh, do we tell them? No. <laughs> anyway, so the, the funny part about that story is we wanted to play Smite, which is on a high-res platform, and I'm like, okay, who are you? He's like, Azure Wraith. I'm like, what? Yeah, Azure Wraith. I'm like, that's not your name. No. Nope. Because anywhere you go, Juhadre is me. Yep. Anywhere I go, I am Juhadre. And it's everywhere. And it's the same thing with Cobalt, except on high res and it's always hurt my brain he went so far as to look up why he couldn't have that name it's because it's taken by someone who hasn't played in like years i, I actually got in with support and was was talking to him like you, you don't understand this this is me this is my brand yeah <laughs> it's, it, it's a lot more was a lost account hey <laughs> you need that back. no what's so funny is the guy offered he's like listen man i mean if this is your email i can send you a reset password link did you do it why i, why, I why, have why? that email okay so the yeah that's that's the problem i don't think he should have done that he actually i, I was i bugged him long enough he sent me the email that the account belonged to. And that's what finally convinced me. Oh, like when I was talking to him, I was sure it was my account. I'm like, nobody uses Cobalt, right? Mm-hmm. This is me. This is me everywhere. Like, dude, this is my account. Just, just, just get me in. So he finally sends me the email and it's something, something chicken, whatever. It's like right. some, t- some totally random guy's email. It's like, oh, I don't think you should have sent me that. But yeah, that's actually not my account. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> funny. It's a great story. <laughs> that's funny. So look for Cobalt Wraith. Look for Alvatross17. Look for Juhadre. But not only that, look for at Rated R Esports on Twitter and YouTube. At Rated R LOL what? and all, everything else. We've in, also now got we Google have, Play and iTunes. We have Juhadre on Google Play and nice. iTunes. This is the second episode since we got those releases on those platforms. So congratulations to us. Big thank you to Cobalt Wraith for joining us for this episode and sharing the knowledge and passion you have that we talk about so often. By the way, in about a week, I'm going to bring up another thing. Excellent. I'll be there for it. I know it. (laughs) You know you'll be there for it. (laughs) Yeah, but now I know enough I can join. But anyways, everybody, have a great day. 